folks. It's, uh, it's time to roll. We're on time, a little bit late. So I'd like to bring this meeting to order. Uh, select board meeting of April 3rd, 2019. Uh, we will come to order. So we will first have the consent agenda. And on our consent agenda, we have uh, warrants or minutes from December 5th, 2018, December 12th, 2018, and March 6th, 2019. We have AP 1940S on the warrants, PR 1938, PR 1939, AP 1938, AP 1938S, and AP 1939AP 1939B. Uh, we have a request to use Hooker School from the Fire Department request to use Hooker School for training and that will be after everybody has vacated. Um, we have an end of the probationary period. Did you want to take, anybody want to take that out? I think we should take it out. Yeah. Okay, so we'll take that out and discuss after. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a community compact grant award. The town has been awarded $20,695 grant through the community compact best practice program for an electronic data management project. Eversource notification. Eversource has issued its annual notice for the Eversource five year vegetation management plan. Can we take that one out too? Just yes. briefly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a civility and inclusion, formation of the civility and inclusion governmental body. And that will be, I don't want to take it out. We'll just uh, have discussion okay. for it further. We're going to just have. Uh, the start of it to happening. Okay. We had a diversity committee uh, formed uh, back in mm -hmm. the spring, mm -hmm. um, so we were are going to be adding on to that at this point and um, calling it the civility and inclusion government body. Okay, and then we'll be we'll talking more about the mission and all that at a future date. Correct. Okay. All right. So I will make a motion to approve the uh, items that remained in the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we'll take uh, Christopher Okerfer, the DPW director. He has come to the end of his 90-day probationary period, and at that time we were to uh, grant him a contract, and um, people had uh, some questions on that. David, did you want to bring up anything? No, I just, uh, I'll just comment that, Chris, I think you done a, a very good job of um, customer service and um, you know interacting with the community very well especially just kind of being thrown into the mix so uh, I appreciate that and I know you've gotten some emails and, and phone calls saying the same thing so uh, I appreciate the hard work I want to echo that and uh, breath of fresh air something different management style you know a lot of you know we've had some very good people um, but really Really happy that you're here and uh, hearing nothing but good things. Okay, and I think the only other thing that we wanted to address is that we wanted to make sure at some point in the very near future that you have residents uh, in Hadley. So I hear that's in the works. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate Once again, thank you for the opportunity, ma'am. I'm very grateful. We hope to work together with you. Thank you. Yeah. Motion. motion to approve um, yeah. the end of the probationary period and Second. bring it to contract. Mm -hmm. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then you wanted to. And the ever source thing, I just wanted to. I kind of took a deep dive on this last night because I was a little concerned about it. Um, just like spraying herbicides randomly throughout Hadley and didn't know if there'd be any warnings and there's farm fields that are organic, all that kind of stuff. And it looks like it's mainly for um, kind of the. Uh, transmission lines, so the bigger power lines, and there's only a few spots actually in Hadley that have those lines, and uh, it's mainly mechanical control of vegetation with some spot spraying, it looks like, of herbicides and that kind of thing. Um, they will warn abutters when they are, they're doing that, and if anybody has any questions about it, there's a contact person you can contact at Eversource that's in charge of the whole thing. So. Um, I don't think it's really impacting any kind of farmland or anything along those those lines. So I just wanted to say that so people can be. All right. Is there a motion? Uh, motion to approve. 
Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Somebody texting Mr. Waskevich? I did. Thank you. Thank you. I haven't got one back yet. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're also predictable. All right. <laughs> All right, we do have an open comment period for public comment. Is there anybody here? Hi, Jane. Hi. I would like to invite everybody to the wine tasting this Friday night. It's a fundraiser for the Friends of the Hadley Council on Aging. Tickets are $15 in advance or $20 at the door. We have great music, refreshments. Fun people to be around and excellent wines to taste. And where is this going to And be? wonderful raffle prizes. It will be at First Church right next door. And what time does it start? Six to eight. Six to eight, okay. Great. And I happen to have tickets in my pocket. <laughs> 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 of course you do. If anybody like a wine uh, event, it's Friday night. Is there anybody else? Yes, Dina? Oh, Michelle. Michelle, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 I'm so close all the time. I just want to say to my petition article, which is the one to support the resolutions in the State Senate and the State House, to inform a commission to look at redoing the state motto and seal. And I just wanted to give you a couple reasons why I thought this merits some looking at. The idea is not to erase history. It's to fill out the history, because the history that's represented on the field was basically written by the people, the conquerors. And there are a lot of people of Native heritage, I don't three in Hadley, who find the seal very problematic. Um, the commission that would be formed would have um, the head of the Commission on Indian Affairs, five other Native representatives, historical rep, um, historian for the state of Massachusetts, cultural commissioner for the state of Massachusetts, several legislators, and would have to go to the legislature. So it's not a wholesale remaking without accountability to history. And um, I will speak about this at town meeting, but we're basically want to include everybody. I work in human services, and we have a motto that says, nothing about me without me. Um, and what I, a lot of people are thinking, when we um, redo the seal, we want the input of the Native community along with um, the input of everybody else on the seal. So we're filling in history. We're not trying to obliterate it. And also so everybody knows, we have not had the same seal the whole time. It's been redesigned multiple times um, over the years. And I could speak quite a bit about it. But you know, even the Latin motto, which is by um, loosely translated by the sword we see liberty, but liberty through peace. Just to point out, it was liberty for the colonists. It was the end of liberty for the native peoples in Massachusetts. So I think it behooves us to um, just support this going through. It'll be a process, and it's not a whole, um, it's not a washing out of history. It's really rounding it out. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I did bring a couple copies of um, one, man's, um, one man's history of this effort and also of Native peoples in Massachusetts. So I have a copy of that. I would be happy to leave a copy with you. Sure. That'd be great if you want to do that, Michelle. OK. okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, anybody else have anything for this open period? All right, um, Lynn. Just yes. one more question on another topic. Um, I was just curious about um, the ball field, um, and I did bring it up at the candidates' night. Um, and I heard last year I was unable to attend a meeting. There was a municipal meeting, a municipal buildings meeting, I believe. It was possibly a planning board meeting where Joel Greenbaum brought a proposal that I heard was generally favorably um, viewed, um, and then it, there were some people who were vocal about it, and basically that plan was dropped. I don't know what you know about it, but was that plan contingent about having the whole ball field um, the sale of the property. taken out of recreational protection? When mm -hmm. dropped it. Oh. He, he dropped it, but apparently because there was there were threats of suits by somebody. And that was, that was in Westfield, but David, do you want to speak to that? Yeah, so uh, back in the days when we tried to sell North Hadley Village Hall, 
there was a proposal from Mr. Greenbaum for the field and the building. Um, that deal did not transpire, and we find ourselves back at square one trying to sell the fields and the, ball, and the, the building. In the meantime, the State Supreme Judicial Court ruled on the Westfield case, which clarifies Article 97 protection for ball fields uh, across the Commonwealth. And based upon the 1916 town meeting vote that created the ball field uh, in Hadley, uh, it is more likely than not, although <coughs> there are some gray areas here, it more likely than not uh, falls under, that ball field falls under Chapter 90, uh, Article 97 uh, uh, protection. And for people um, who uh, don't know about Article 97, it's part of the Mass Massachusetts Constitution that protects recreational space and open space. So there are two articles on the warrant for this annual town meeting, one of which is to petition the legislature to lift the Article 97 protection on the ball field for the North Hadley Village ball field and to substitute Article 97 protection for Zaturka Park, which still remains unprotected uh, parkland. So the ball field's about one acre, and Zaturka Park is at least four acres, so we'd be making more than a one-to-one -one, uh, exchange. Yeah. But, but isn't it true also that Zaturka Park is not really suitable for much else because of the drainage and because of the location? Zuturka Park was originally acquired by the town as a uh, gravel pit and as a uh, dump. Yeah. Dump, uh, dump. Well, dump, dump. We used it for dump, stump dumps. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we could certainly use it for that purpose again, okay. uh, pending Department of Environmental Protection <coughs> approval. Anything else? Okay, let's, uh, David, how about quickly your town administrator's well, report? We kind of didn't include you in that the last meeting, so I'll let you. Uh, there's a lot to report, so if you want to move on to other things. <coughs> I must say she'll be here in about five minutes. Who did? Uh, Board of Health. Board of Health? Do you want to? All right, let me go through it very quickly. Con compensation classification plan study update. So we hired uh, DIJ Municipal Consulting Services to perform a review of the compensation plan, the classification plan, and job descriptions for all municipal positions, except for the school employees. Uh, we had an orientation meeting. We've conducted a questionnaire for the employees. There's going to be a follow-up meeting next week. Comparable uh, communities are being surveyed for wages <coughs> and rates, so we should be finishing that project in April. We received the um, Grant for the electronic uh, uh, document management system, you, you're going to be voted to sign the contract tonight. Uh, we received, we have applied for a uh, culvert replacement grant uh, as administered by the Massachusetts Division of Ecological Restoration for the culvert on Moody Bridge Road, so we're waiting to hear uh, whether we receive that grant or not. Planning Board had a meeting with the fire substation uh, last night. We'll hear more about that in the presentation. Uh, and then the same with the Senior Center and Library construction update. Uh, that project is moving along very well. OSHA update, we received a grant through the uh, Direct tech, Local Technical uh, Assistance Program. Uh, for $12,500 with two other communities to develop policies required by the new regulations under OSHA-like uh, safety uh, requirements of the state that were just implemented by the, uh, the legislature. Kickoff meeting was held and follow-up meetings are being scheduled, so that project is moving forward. Uh, Planning Board apparently finished their work on adult use marijuana zoning bylaws last night. Uh, Board of Health has finished their work on, on those regulations uh, and we are now being uh, just, uh, talked to by a number of interested parties who would like to get into the adult use marijuana business in Hadley. 
So on the next agenda, we'll talk about how are we going to dis distribute the two licenses that are available. We're, plan we're working with an RFP process to do that. Okay, so the IT upgrade update, we linked the DPW to the town hall server on March 20th. On March 28th, we had Acuity Technologies assess both the town hall and the DPW for information technology. They will re develop a report on present conditions and future needs. And the information contained within this, within this report will serve as the basis for the town's next application for com community compact IT grant. So keep that ball moving forward. We're developing a grant for the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program. This is a Baker administration program to help uh, municipalities uh, assess and implement policies and practices that will help uh, protect towns from climate change and just, uh, weather events and flooding. Uh, the grant is due in early May, and we have a rough draft of that ready. Uh, we'll be working with uh, Chris Okafor of DPW and Mike Spanknagel of the Fire Department to finish that grant. We received, we, as in the Commonwealth, received a grant for $170,000 to be shared by the 260 Massachusetts communities that are MS4 communities. And we'll use that money for public education and awareness under the Think Blue campaign, which is to heighten public awareness about stormwater issues. On the Route 9 widening project, and this is something we'll talk about in tonight's agenda a little bit more detail, Mass DOT has offered to do a traffic speed survey as part of the project. Uh, to assess speed limit concerns uh, raised by the, uh, the Hadley Police Department along Road 9. Bay Road Bridge replacement, there is a public hearing on April 18th, right here in this room at 6 p.m. The uh, purpose of the hearing is to provide, public, provide the public with details on the proposed Bay Road bridge replacement project. So the entire bridge is going to be replaced. We will not have weight restriction on that bridge while the, the bridge is being worked. But it will be one lane traffic. Uh, the electricity aggregation project. We finally got an update from the Massachusetts Department of Public Utilities. We now have a tentative schedule for implementing that in the town of Hadley, uh, which is provided in my report. I won't read it, I'll read it out to you. But Looks like it's going to start in May. This is something we've been working for several years to uh, implement, and I'm glad to see it moving forward. It may be worth our while to bring the uh, good energy people back into the board to talk about the project because there's been some turnover in the meantime so that everybody knows what this project is for. We're continuing to meet with uh, leadership uh, having to do with the Hampshire College um, and thinking about the possible impacts of, about the downsizing of Hampshire College to the folks in Hadley. We have 14 Hadley residents <coughs> working there. There's a number of properties that Hampshire College owns in Hadley. We have a solar array in Hadley. Their security force uh, um, uh, housing is in Hadley. And there's a number of uh, farmers and local businesses that uh, do a lot of business with Hampshire College. So trying to uh, understand the impacts and mitigate them whenever possible. In the area of departmental functions, we're in the last quarter of the fiscal year. So we'll be uh, looking at expenses and making sure that uh, the budget is uh, being managed appropriately. Uh, we'll get into discussions about transfers and requests from the reserve fund uh, in about another month as, as the situation becomes clearer. The audit, FY 2018, the draft audit is complete and we're now developing the final audit and that will be presented to you shortly. Um, Bi-weekly payroll, that's going to be implemented on June 7th. And we're holding uh, budget training uh, programs with the help of Greenfield Savings Bank 
uh, paid for under a wellness grant. Is that across the board by weekly? Yes. So school is already there with everybody else. Potential savings of about three thousand dollars a year. And upcoming town actions and events, community events. April 7th, Helping Hearts for Hadley. April 9th, annual elections. Everybody should exercise their right to vote. April 13th, there's a rabies clinic. April 18th, Mass DOT. We'll have the Bay Road Bridge replacement public hearing. April 24th is our last day to post the annual town meeting. April 25th is a public forum on the annual town meeting morning. April 27th, the Hadley Mothers Club our recycling event will happen. And then May 2nd is the annual town meeting on top of the at 7 o'clock. That's what I have. Thank you. And we'll get into the budget. And start with that. We have a 715. Boy, they cut that tight for a budget and bowl hearing. That's okay. Um, it's going to get through all these budgets here. If it's 25 to 20 minutes, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, so we only have um, administrative funds. Where are you going to start? We're going to start with the uh, 500 less budgets, which is the uh, human services. And I think Council on Aging is the first one. Okay. Council on Aging? like to give your budget good evening Thank all right so I guess I'll start um, just updating everybody aside from the budget I should have said this during public comment but the senior center is now located at 120 Russell Street in the parish hall of most Holy Redeemer Church we are no longer at 46 Middle Street for the duration of the construction of the new building. Um, and I also should say that we don't at this point have live phone lines, but I am checking our voicemail and responding back. So there's no lapse in service to people. Um, but if you get the machine, leave your message, leave your name, leave your number, and we will get back to you. Um, thank uh, you. For how's that. it going over there so far? Good. Amazingly, we're pretty settled in. Um, I, I have to say, um, Jamie Jackenhouse and Gary Burke did a phenomenal job. I mean, months went into trying to downsize and organize things that we weren't taking, but when it came time to actually hauling stuff over there, three days and we were in. I was anticipating having to stay all weekend to get it in and <coughs> But it looks as though we've been there for a long time, and people are enjoying the space. Oh, good. Yeah, they really good. like how bright and one level it is. And amazingly, um, we saw no attrition um, just having started there Monday. Um, no attrition in classes. In fact, we're seeing bigger than ever numbers. So if that's any indication of space, mm -hmm. we have a lot to look forward to. So I'm good. pleased about that. I was worried some good. people might drop off, and that's not the case at all. Good. So Great. It's early, but it's a good start. Good. All right. So um, I just want to recap the last couple years because it it's a strategic plan on our part to um, bring our staffing levels um, incrementally through the years when we brought the program coordinator position up to full-time three years ago, um, we had the um, Friends of Council on Aging supplementing the budget a little, a, a lot the first year, a little bit the second year with fiscal year 19 or 20 being the final, the, or the year that the town is handling all of that along with the $16,668 from our formula grant, which is the total state formula grant funding that full-time position. Um, 
I'm 40 hours there. The program coordinator is the 35 hour position, the only other full time position. So in my absence, um, she opens, closes, and does the administrative tasks. The other paid position that we have there is the um, outreach coordinator, which we had dropped down to 10 hours. Um, what I'm looking to do is uh, with the outreach coordinator is the same thing that we did with the program coordinator. Um, so for um, fiscal year 19 and fiscal year 20, my request is the same, but you're only, I'd like to bring her up to 15 hours, which she has been doing for half the year because we didn't have somebody for a great amount of time and with the move we needed that extra manpower so we took those unused funds and put her to 15 hours to help us get with um, get with where we're at now so keeping that funding level request for 20 I'd still like to have her stay at 15 hours for fiscal year 20 but the friends will cover the difference of that whole year which would be $5,935 for this year. Um, and then for fiscal year 21, they would supplement $5,038, and the town would cover $15,115. And then in 21, I'd like to get her to 20 hours, which would be four days a week, or five days a week, four hours a day okay so the goal is to keep her at the 15 she's been doing and then by 21 get her up to 20 hours where she's there every day right now she's there on Mondays Thursdays and Fridays there's a, a gap where people are still trying to get in contact with her and two days when you're dealing and she's doing a great job hooking um, case managers up with people from Highland Valley so that these in-home services that we're going to see an increasing need for as our demographic ages will not be solely depending on the Council on Aging for Crisis Management. They'll have resources from all levels put into place by Highland Valley. So that relationship has been established really well and it's gonna grow with the aging demographic. So I'd like to stage this that way so that we're staying with the growing need. And fortunately, we have the friends to help us offset that while we get there. Those are the two biggest jumps that you'll see in my budget. Um, the program coordinator being um, fully funded, well not fully funded, but partially funded by the formula grant with the rest covered by you and then the friends pick up the st uh, staggered addition of hours for the outreach coordinator. That still only gives us two full-time and one part-time when we get to 2021, which is kind of amazing considering we're seeing at least 500 people coming in over the course of a year, even if it's only once for taxes. So all in all, um, those are the biggest jumps in the budget. Um, you'll see that if we go down to the van maintenance and repair, I've lowered that to just cover um, the inspections and for the sticker and for the six month lift inspections um, because it will be a new van, which we expect in May. We don't expect to have to be repairing to the tune of thousands of dollars the way that we were with the old van. And if something does come up we still have the revolving van account that we can draw from so we're trying to stay lean in the whole budget um, while for, you know having some other resources to help us if something unforeseen comes up um, we went down on the office equipment maintenance because we don't have a copying machine anymore it got taken out um, from the hooker school and if we need any big copying, we'll have it done here um, until we get into the new building when everything gets set up a year from now. Um, postage, self-explanatory. Um, 
and dues went up at the very bottom for Massachusetts Council on Aging. Well, other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Pretty clear. Thank you, explanation Thank you very much. Thank you. It. Thank you for coming in tonight. Oh, my pleasure. Not like we don't have enough meetings, but thank you. <laughs> Especially this past year, I understand that, and I appreciate you do coming in. Thank you. Well, if you have any anything comes up, or you want an update, or you want to come see our new digs, okay. stop over. Great. Right, thank you. Event is going up Friday. Oh yes. Okay. Event yes. Friday. Construction fence Friday. Yes. I did see that. Uh, what else is Friday? The, the wine, wine tasting. tasting. Oh, okay. Public comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed my start. All right. Next one. Board of Health. Emma, good All evening. Right. Thank Hi. you for coming. Yes. So I think this is actually really exciting because it's like, I think the first time that the health department come to you guys in a long time. So these are some just pictures from my PowerPoint. I think I just emailed it to you as well. But um, so this year, the health department, um, certainly the Hadley Health Department or Board of Health has um, not been seeing an increase in our budget line for a very long time. Uh, we certainly understand that uh, due to the kind of old style that we are running the department with a lot of volunteers without regular staffing. Um, but certainly over the past 20 years, even in the past 10 years or five years, I think all of us who live in Hadley can certainly appreciate the huge economic growth that we've had and amount of buildings and restaurants and infrastructure that have come into our town, which is amazing, which is great. But the health department and Board of Health is certainly one of those areas that is serving a lot of their needs to make sure that we're all safe as a community by all the restaurants that we're eating in, by doing regular inspections. Um, by making sure our public are safe in their homes if they're not able to care for themselves anymore sometimes we help with that with connecting people with services um, and then really by doing all some outreach and education that we really haven't been able to do because we don't have regular staff so looking into the future um, of the health department five ten years from now that's really what we'd love to be able to see is a regular employee that's able to kind of guide the department and lead the department but certainly right now I've only been in my role in the Board of Health for a, under a year now, so um, we didn't want to erroneously ask for a big ask without a lot of statistics and research and valid um, needs to be able to fulfill that. So this year we are asking for a level funded budget um, without any real increases in that. One of the things that we did ask for um, and when really looking at in terms of a crosstown comparison with our local communities and the service needs that we're delivering with other area budgets is uh, what seems like would be equal with the service services that we're delivering would be a much higher budget, but we also understand that would be very challenging for Hadley. Um, we, our current budget is $35,000 and by the amount of workload that we do and uh, volunteer time, which I know I've been logging my hours just since January and it's an average of over 13 hours a week in my own time. Um, we're meeting every week as an elected board with two hours at a clip. Um, we're, in addition to that, I know Dick Tessier is spending a lot of his own time going out to restaurants and doing that active work. Um, I know Greg is doing that as well and working with the Title V as well. So I know one of the things that we're really looking forward to is the opportunity to increase our technology use um, and being able to sustain that moving forward um, with new equipment. Uh, probably the start of using an electronic permit software, um, which was one of the big asks for the 2020 um, capital. So thank you. Any questions? Only two questions. Yeah. Um, moving to a more modern professional board of health, mm -hmm. is there a way to increase revenues at all from the inspections or oh, from yeah. the permits that are going to be issued? Yep. So I think that's one of the things that I started to look at a little differently um, than certainly our old style is kind of 
looking at as much as it makes me cringe as the nurse that I am, but um, thinking of health um, departments as a service line, right? Um, and as a res revenue stream for the town. Um, one of the things that we looked at uh, is like tanning, camps, um, restaurants, being able to go out and do more routine inspections, um, body works areas. A lot of people don't realize that reflexology, Reiki, um, using the Himalayan bath salts, all of those kind of alternative things that don't necessarily fall under the state massage um, guidelines, which a couple years, five, ten years ago, was removed from local boards of health, um, are areas that we're not servicing right now and not collecting for and actively reaching out for, um, which is a big thing that I know I'm looking forward to. How about anything with you just passed your marijuana law also, or, or your policy on that? Is there any implication or any uh, fees that you're going to be able to uh, gain from that from doing HEP? Because I think that's the only thing right now that can be grown on uh, at least 61A or other pieces of land. Yeah, so I know with the Cannabis Commission, with the dispensary that we're looking for in the town, our language under the Board of Health um, is $3,500 uh, per, per agent that's dispensing plus an overhead fee for the facility um, and <coughs> I know we're really looking forward to being able to support the town monitor that and also make sure our community is safe while kind of delivering that new service to the town so you're community. actually going to have to be the ones that will monitor the fields and things like that or who, who's going to do that well I'm talking more about the dispensing area okay um, in terms I believe I know the cannabis Commission is going to be working a lot with us um, I think those kind of fine-tuned things with the hemp and the growing mm -hmm. haven't totally been established I know David's been helping us out a lot with educating ourselves um, so that we will be able to kind of evaluate things but I know um, the way that they're kind of regulated and monitored throughout our community is kind of different in each town. So I think finding out what will work for us will be a work in progress. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. Appreciate you coming. Cool. Based, on, based on our budget kind of focuses, where did human services fall in that? Do you remember? Was that like two or three years out? It wasn't yeah, next, right? Yeah, it was yeah. education and then I think it was right. the We kind of had a budget process yep. where each year we were focusing on different yep. areas. So I'm just trying to think if yeah. it's something for next year. Or for well, and, and that's we part of why I wanted to come to, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Oh, no, no, go ahead. I'm just so gonna, excited. Yeah. I'm nervous all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's really why I wanted to come tonight, to really be able to start the conversation. <coughs> I think that we have such an ability to meet our citizens and our community where they're at. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity for growth in the area and while still using the resources that we have, um, but our inspectors are getting older, the ones that have been working for us. Um, our town nurse is also getting a little bit older and we're expecting retirement soon. So for me, being a five or 10 year person, because I'm in this for the long haul, I really want to be doing this for a long time and seeing it succeed. Uh, looking at the five to 10 year projection is my long goal, you know? So that's why I wanted to start the conversation, have people be aware of our struggles, the thing, the tools that we're using and um, our needs for the future. Okay. Yeah. Emma, one of the things we asked, um, planning board has the same issue, you know, they, they Every year they come in and they remind yeah. us that you know they're not here forever. So we asked them if they could help help us by um, at some point maybe at a separate meeting coming in and talking about, yeah. in your opinion, what that future should look like in terms of staffing. Yeah, that'd be really helpful. That would be wonderful. And maybe a way to get there. Yeah, but not yeah. just a step up like a yeah. ramp. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And Thank one more you. question: How's the new office? Oh, the new office is great. Um, we have some <laughs> challenges right now with the internet, but we're going to work that out. I know Northeast IT has been coming out and helping us. I know Jen's been working on it really, really hard. Um, but I, I know it's as much as no one thinks watch, walking up an extra flight of stairs can be cumbersome. Um, when we've been using the printer downstairs to print stuff off and then bring them to people that come into meetings, um, it can get a little not as a great workflow so the new space is really great thank you for asking thanks thank you okay i got three minutes can i go ahead with the poll meeting we have to do exactly 7 15. Uh -huh. 
don't know. Any objection? Any objection? Going for the polls? No, I'm going to interrupt the budget process for just a minute. Because we did have two poll hearings, and it's uh, Eversource is first. Can you hear? No Eversource. Verizon. No Verizon. Okay. Uh, should I wait? Should so I go? I guess we'll wait. They're coming. Huh? I don't think they're coming. They're not coming. So let's just get so. them off the books here. No. Okay. So uh, there was a. Are they supposed to be here? Well, they they're obviously invited, <coughs> but uh, they've chosen not to. So uh, let's <coughs> move this project forward. And okay. See what we can do with so it. So under the provisions of Chapter 166, General Law. And any additions thereto or amendments thereof, a public hearing is necessary on the actual petitions. Please schedule a public hearing. So we did that. Do I need to go to back to the other one? Okay. Jennifer, do you want to walk us through this? Um, sure. Which one are we doing first? Eversource or Verizon? I've got our Eversource. Okay. Um, Eversource submitted paperwork to um, install. A, I'm sorry, I'm just pulling them out. It's hard to navigate. Poll hearing. Um, Eversource asked to install a pole uh, 25 feet from the center of Russell Street to feed the new senior center. Um, so that's it's an electrical pole for the senior center. I've checked in with public safety with UPW. Everybody said we're okay with it. I sent out the abutter notifications. Are there any abutters here? So uh, the abutters were notified 14 days in advance. We followed all the steps and uh, Eversource was notified. I can't remember if they typically come to the poll hearings or not. So this poll is uh, on Route 9 next to the Legion in the town parking area, is that? Yes. Okay. There is a diagram, one of the attachments in there has a diagram of, of the, uh, where the pole would be located. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All I, those in favor? I just have one question for <coughs> Christopher here. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. th is th this is far enough back where when they widen Route 9, they're mm -hmm. not going to have to move it again? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. That was my only question. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And Verizon, you want to walk us through that one, Jen? Yes, Verizon is, um, they're also applying for a poll for Russell Street, and they're asking for their poll to be located centrally 292 feet northeast of uh, East Street. Um, and it is, this is a joint poll, so this is Verizon, um, W-M-E-C-O, Wemeco? Western Massachusetts. Yes. Um, and it's a joint poll between the two of them. Again, um, there's been, nobody is, all the abutters were notified 14 days in advance. There was no uh, feedback in the negative. So as far as I can tell, we're good to go on it as well. Okay. Any questions? Motion? Motion to approve. Second. Is that the poll that's on top of the sewer line? Is that why they're moving? It's you got a picture of it? I, I don't see the bank. <laughs> so is this the bank moving? And that's the post office. Are you yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's Eversource. They don't discuss it with him. Is that the pole that's through the sewer line? This is Verizon. Is that the one you're moving? This is Verizon. Uh, I'm petitioning for a new poll on Russell Street. This is Not Verizon. Really that was, he's ever sourced. We already approved you. We just approved yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Russell Street. Oh. <laughs> 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 Any questions? <laughs> Are you involved? Are you involved with the uh, one on East Street and Route 9? Uh, I can't speak to that right now. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to give you any uh, wrong information. So. Well, we got most of the information here, but I just was wondering if that's the one you were moving. There's a, a guide wire through the sewer line. Sewer main over there. Is this related to the senior center? No. Yeah, I can't speak to that. No. Okay. Are you going to speak to it at 7:30? Um, no. Okay. I believe it's rising at 7:30. Yes. Yeah. We should probably wait till 7:30. Probably, okay. probably okay. wait till 7:30. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. 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 No more questions. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Chris. Yeah. Huh? Chris. Chris. Yes, Chris. Yes, Chris. Is, is that the poll that 
that's through the sewer line, do you know? No, they are installing a new pole. That's not the one. That's not the no, no, no. The next one coming up. No, that's, that's, not, that's, that's not the sewer. That's another new one? Yes. What, do you know if they're going to be moving those telephone poles when they come through with the Route 9 construction? Hey, Have you been we, notified? We've been, we've been discussing with the uh, mass uh, last meeting I had with, uh, with mass DOT. They are aware of it and uh, we would like them to do that. So. Well, we get closer, we'll <coughs> when we were out there um, uh, cameraing and, and checking to see who actually poked a hole through the sewer main, uh, they were uh, going to, Verizon was supposed to talk to um, District 2 to see if they were going, if their plans were to move the telephone poles when they go through with the widening of Route 9. Yeah, we, we <coughs> discussed with District 2 uh, when we sat down with them concerning water and sewer a few, few weeks ago. They are, they are, it's on the agenda, so we believe that uh, they will do that. Otherwise, we'll put uh, some... Uh, it'll, be, it'll be difficult for them to widen the road, and we have that issue, and they ignore it. Yeah, we have the issue. So. <coughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know why they're moving but a pole if they're going to move the all the poles over the, and they widen the, the, nine, the, you know? the 730 is not moving pole. The seventh meeting is a new pole. Another pole, an additional one. Okay. Okay. So we'll wait on that one then, just in case. Okay. So <coughs> you want to do UMass Transit stuff, Bay Road and Route 47? Take them out of the way. Sure. So, uh, I, I'm trying to stand or sit. Whatever you want to do. I'll stand. We're casual. We're casual. <laughs> so my name is Price Armstrong. I'm the manager of planning uh, for PBTA. I'm joined by my colleagues, Jamie Carroll, who's the director of operations for VATCO, which operates out of Northampton, and Glenn Barrington, who's the director of operations for, for general manager, mm -hmm. general manager for UMass Transit. Mm -hmm. So I have some handouts, if I can pass them down, on exactly what the proposal is. Uh, I brought my operations guides in case there are any specific questions that I can't answer. But the gist is we have a passenger, a Hadley resident, who lives south of this intersection of Bay Road and Route 47. Um, and uh, he frequently wants to get off at this intersection. The nearest bus stops are almost a mile away in either direction. It's like three quarters of a mile or so in either direction. Um, and so we want to try and accommodate this gentleman. It's against PVTA policy to let anybody off outside of a signed bus stop. This is for safety reasons. We don't want the drivers to uh, be in a position where they have to, on the fly, let a, let a passenger off at the passenger's request um, because it may not be safe. Uh, it's also for um, customer experience reasons. If we had customers who could ask to get off at any point, then the buses would never run on time. So that's our standing policy. We're trying to accommodate uh, this customer and Hadley resident by installing a bus stop at this intersection. We've identified a couple of potential spots. We, we typically try and do paired bus stops so that inbound and outbound um, this, this customer can get off and on. We d honestly, we don't expect any more than that one person to get off or on. It would be the bus stopping for like 20 or 30 seconds to, to let him off or let him get on. And it would save him, especially in the winter time, uh, having to walk a mile or so to get to his house. Uh, it's worth noting that the um, only route that runs on this is the 39. That's the one that services Hampshire College uh, and uh, Smith College. So that actually doesn't even run in the summertime. Um, so it, it doesn't run from May 2nd to September or something. May, uh, May 10th to September 2nd. Yeah, I, I know the bus stop is by my house, which is near the Waldorf School. OK. Yes. That's the bus stop. And then I have seen uh, somebody walking in the road uh, going that way. And I did have concerns one night coming home from a select board meeting at 9 o'clock at night with somebody in the road. Um, yeah. Which I was concerned about. I did call the police that night because oh, wow. I didn't know who he was and, you know, it just was uh, for his safety. I was mm -hmm. concerned about it that night. Yeah. Because it's I'm dark not, there. Yeah. yeah. And there are no street lights and no. it's not, you know, there are no sidewalks. So the, mm -hmm. the most, you know, from our perspective, if we can do anything to make it safer for this customer sure. and Hadley resident, 
Um, and you know, it's it's not for us. It's not a big deal to install uh, a pole and sign. We would have to do a dig safe and work with the DPW um, to to do that. Um, but you know, we wanted to talk with you. Honestly, this is the first time that I've uh, come to the town of Hadley uh, to do a pole installation. So I'm not sure what the process is from here, but I thought I could at least kick the conversation off. I think certainly speaking with DPW and seeing, mm -hmm. you know, um, their, get their input on it. But I don't have a problem with um, having a bus stop there for this person. I think it would be more safety for him than, and there may be other people at some point that would write it also. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple of questions. Sure. Um, how far from that intersection is the proposed stop? And the reason I ask is because turning from Lawrence Plain onto Bay Road, traffic tends to be going fairly fast around the corner, and there is there is no line of sight. So a, a bus stopped as someone makes the corner is not exactly the best thing. Yeah, if they hit the bus once, they'll slow down. That's true. <laughs> there we go. That's no, no, no. We've tried to avoid that at all costs. Yes, if our claims agent is listening or watching, we try to avoid that at all costs. Uh, you know, it's sort of um, up for negotiation. The, I put, I marked out some approximate places. Okay. Um, uh, so if you're looking here, so coming off of Lawrence Plain and taking a right onto Bay Road, heading uh, toward Hampshire College. And there's a slight incline there. It, it starts to incline. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so this is, this tends to be a little bit flatter. On the other side of the street is where you have a big, like, berm, like right. a big, yeah. uh, 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 topographical area where you have a lot less flexibility in where you cite it. I think this one, uh, you know, I don't want to speak on, uh, on behalf of the DPW, but from my perspective, my non-engineering perspective, I think there's a lot of flexibility uh, here, referring to this area, to, to install the sign. And, you know, the one the one consideration, and this is sort of the, the tug and the pull, the road narrows as you get further from the intersection. So even for that 10 or 20 seconds that a bus is there discharging passengers, it's going to be when you get closer to the intersection, it'll be easier for cars to get around, but obviously, like, that's not necessarily the safest. So maybe it's maybe it's better for it actually to be pulled forward so that traffic is just stopped for 10 seconds, and then and then we move forward. You know, that's the kind of conversation I would definitely want to have with the director. And then have the Hunters been notified? Because I know the Chamorros probably have it. It's abutting their property, yes. But that person walks that frequently. Right. Yeah. No, I understand. I just figured it. And they actually live on 47. The, I believe this person does, from what I understand. Yes. Yeah. yeah they do. So, which is around the corner and up the hill a little bit too. So. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I, I don't know what the protocol is. I'd be happy to get in touch with the abutters, or if that's something that the town wants to do, you know, I'm, I'm flexible. I don't have a problem with it. I just think that our vote should entail that you work with the DPW director to okay. put it in the proper spot, which would be, and also have the police input. I know that um, they have talked about it, but I think, you know, for safety concerns, you would want to speak with them also. Okay. Are you going to make pull-offs or just put a sign and... Just put a sign in. Yeah, I, I wish we that's could all that's off. there on. Well, all they have the emergency access uh, road on Bay Road is where they can actually pull in when they're dropping, picking up, <coughs> coming this way from Amherst mm -hmm. um, near the Waldorf School. So there's really not a pull off from there either. So, um, and there's been no incidents to my knowledge at that point either. Not that I've. I've never seen an incident there. Uh, uh, so I'll, I'll just share yeah. a little bit of detail. I went out there yesterday to take pictures, and uh, there's about 250 feet between uh, the beginning of the intersection up to the telephone pole on the eastbound side of the street. So there's a, a lot of space to sort of determine where you want to put the stop. Yeah. And then on the um, on the westbound side of the street, we would pl plan to put the stop very close to the stop sign, so that you're basically stopping for the stop sign. You could pick up a passenger there or discharge a passenger yeah, that's, there. that's the hardest uh, side yeah. to plan for. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, and, and I, 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 we've not had until this year, this is the first time we've ever interacted with this gentleman. Uh, uh, he lives at 12, um, number 12 on Route Lawrence 47, Plain. yes, mm -hmm. Lawrence Plain Road. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a short uh, hop, skip, and a jump for him yeah. uh, from where he lives. So we just, uh, we just want to make certain that he's safe. So it's a, it's a nice gesture. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Motion. Motion to approve subject to um, 
working with the DPW director and obtaining any sign offs from the public safety person. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So just to clarify, once I get the approval of DPW and public safety, I don't need to come back before this you uh, don't. select board. You okay. Don't. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Lucky ducks, huh? <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So now, well, still got, what, three minutes. <laughs> you who rising. <laughs> Anybody out there? You know, they come in just right at the tail end. Just have their iPhones on, telling them what time it is. Um, anybody there? No. Well, let's do like we did for the last one. Let's just get this one out of the mix here, so we can get back to the budget. Um, the Verizon uh, poll on Russell Street, Jeff. Um, as I was saying, it is located 229 feet in a northeasterly direction. On Route 9, it's a joint poll between Verizon and Western Mass Electric Company. Um, Public Safety and DPW have both seen, and there were no objections, and abutters have been notified. Any abutters for the Verizon poll? No, but they were all notified 14 days in advance. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we can get back to budget. Great. All right, who's next? Mm -hmm. Park and Rec. Yeah. Sure. Jump in. Welcome. Thank you for coming. <laughs> so, we can do uh, our budget in three minutes. That's right. We can do that in three minutes. Right. 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 One, right. two, go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, like the Council on Aging, or a Senior Center Council on Aging, uh, we also have a new location. We are downstairs in the very first office as you walk in the front of the building. Um, it's nice to have people walk by and stop in and not ask where the Council on Aging is. And they have to <laughs> <laughs> um, ask about Park and Rec or just see what's going on in that front office. Um, so step in if you want any information on Park and Rec. Um, but basically, the, there's, I guess, just two new changes to our budget. Um, you'll see kind of a big jump in the salary part. And that's due to um, probably in mid-August or the end of August, I started working um, more hours um, with anticipation of taking over the after-school program. So that would be the one big jump there. Um, and then obviously, we continue to ask for the administrative salary. You know, that hasn't happened in a few years, but we're going to continue to ask for it. Okay. Questions? Uh, looks like some adjustments. Yeah, so for the director's salary, the um, Hadley Kids Incorporated are uh, kicking in additional monies, which are not subject to appropriation from the town, in the same way that the council, Friends of Council on Aging are underwriting some of the salaries there that's also happening here. Uh, the administrative salary request, because this didn't happen to be your year when, uh, when uh, uh, Culture and recreation was being given the priority. I, I trimmed that in order to help budget balance the budget. So those are the two changes that I made. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. 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 You know, um, we have coming up. Yeah, yeah. We, have, we have upcoming is the our annual Easter spring spring and Easter event, which is the sun uh, the 13th uh, Saturday the 13th from 10 to 1 over at the elementary school. Uh, the Easter Bunny will be there with treats as well uh, park and rec, and we'll have uh, raffling off some Easter baskets as we do year year, which are always well appreciated. So we invite those folks uh, to either come bring their or bring their kids or bring their grandkids and. and Enjoy a good time. Was it 12 to 1? Is that what you said? 10 to 1. There you go. That's good. Anything else you want to advertise tonight while you have a chance? Um, we have April vacation program. Our flyer's up. And you can go to had hadleyrec.com. It has all the information on there. Flyers have been out in school. Um, the Easter flyer will go out tomorrow. That's up on our Facebook page as well. Um, 
meetings up in the office. We have them posted downstairs. Jen posted them on the board. Um, I think that's T-ball. Sign-ups are no. up and running. So. Thank you. We really appreciate that you've adjusted over the last couple of years in moving from one place to another and uh, really been uh, good sports about it, I, I would say. But we are trying to accommodate everybody and trying to work through everything that we're doing right now. But thank you. We appreciate it. Good cleaning. Well, yeah. Just to clean things. I guess we could publicize that to the tag sale. We're, we're still hoping to uh, get rid of some of the things in North Hadley Hall. And we had a tag sale a couple, well, in the fall. The well, Friends of Park and yeah, Rec. The Friends of Park and Rec. Yeah. So okay. we're going to try it again in the spring. Yeah. Okay. That State to good. be determined, but stay tuned. Okay. David, could that be tagged on to the auction if there's an interest? Well, quite possibly. I'll be happy to talk with you. We're sure. meeting with the auctioneer on Monday at 10 o'clock. Yeah, there's some big things probably that could go that way. Okay. That would help. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Won't have to wait. Okay. All right. Get rid of that. All right. Sounds good. Next. Thank you. I think we jumped over the library. Library. Good evening. Hello. So, um, so what we have this year is a fairly straightforward level service budget. Um, really, not a lot to comment. Not a lot of big change. The you know personnel is, is fairly uh, steady. Um, you know, we're anticipating an unusual year with the changes coming, the construction happening, uncertainty about parking. Um, so we're, you know, based on the experience of what happened when Route 9 was widened, we are anticipating seeing a, a having a slightly quieter year uh, than an ordinary year. Um, and so there's really no reason this year to try to you know expand services we're just trying to keep things steady as she goes and um, do what we normally do during the summer under slightly difficult conditions um, but uh, it's you know I don't think there's really anything here that I would want to point out in particular it's more or less the same thing that we do every year programs as far as you know they'll still be up and running um, your programs will still be up and running as best you can yes uh, until we uh, start the project and move forward so yeah. we knew this would be a transition year for senior center and the library um, so we're all just all holding holding down holding right. down the fort right and uh, I mean we don't until we have a contractor uh, we won't know what their plan is for things like parking we just don't know what to tell the public and people are already asking where we park, where, you know, and we don't know. So, I think the municipal building committee is working on uh, finding some parking over here on this side. So, um, you know, we'll, that will come forward to eventually. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Uh, any questions for them? No. All right. Thank you. That was easy. Yeah. Thank you for being easy. Next. Historical. Historical commission. Good evening. I'm Diana West, if you don't know who I am, and Ginger Goldsbury and I are here to represent the Historical Commission. We would like to embark on a historical marker project around town. Uh, it, I, I personally find it strange that Hadley doesn't already have historical markers in town. They exist in cities and towns the world over, and we have a very rich history right here in our little town. And so we would like to start in Hakanam and then move northwards. And we'd also like to start by putting a plaque on the town common by the Neurotic Rail Trail. So in years past, we have not come before you to ask for money. In fact, looking at the budget over the past few years, you have decreased our budget line. Uh, so we recognize that we are coming before you asking for a considerable amount of money of $10,000 compared to the 950 you have originally allotted us. So we are hoping to move forward with, the, with this project. I believe each plaque just by itself uh, costs around $900, and that does not include installation fees. This is a 10,000 of CPA? Uh, we are hoping to get whatever we can in the budget and then move forward to go to CPA. So you haven't asked CPA? For not yet. Yeah, that's what I was, I, I saw this and I thought it was a perfect project for CPA. Well, with money. CPA you have to have, you have to have seed money. They won't give you the whole ten thousand. Well, so, um, 
believe the law requires seed money. Yeah. And perhaps that it's our CPA committee's position. It is our CPA's. Yeah. So we have to have something to give them. And so the 10,000, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, go ahead, Ginger. The, 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 um, the ten thousand will be just for Hockenham. I mean, if each if each um, neighborhood maybe, village. Yeah, I mean there will be about nine um, sites in each area, so that'll cost about ten thousand dollars. And we're just going to start with Hockenham. Well, we can't, you know, we we have very few people, and you know, I mean you know our story. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> this is a project that makes us happy, and um, so I don't know. I mean, if we don't use it, we will use it for the next project, that's all. I mean, it's not like we have any other reason to use this money, mm -hmm. except for these markers. It's just a matter of where that money would be coming from right now, correct? It just seems like we've poster child for what the CPA. Mm -hmm. well, well, it's yeah, yeah exactly. I was, I was going to say, we could maybe do something in the fall with the capital, like we could make a capital request to do this and work with CPA at the same time and kind of see what we need to do to put it all together. So your thinking then is if we, I think we, it, I don't know if there's still time to go to CPA. I mean, we don't. It have, wouldn't be for this meeting. That's what I thought. Yeah. So we would have to wait to the fall anyway. Most of our capital projects are being put to the fall anyway. This is just a matter of springtime of balancing our budget. Um, large capital expenses usually are done in the fall. So there's no way for us to get any money to get started. To get to, de to get a design. Not unless it drops out of the sky right now. Well, we'll, we, uh, we'll we have a conversation <laughs> with Andy Morris Freeman and uh, see what could be done. Well, I mean, even if we could get the design, you know, something mm -hmm. yeah. started yeah. for the So summer. let's, David will chat with Andy okay. and see where we can go. Maybe we can get something started for the spring. Okay. And having a price on what that design would cost would be really helpful. Yeah. They usually oh, like, looking into that. they do like to have a price. Right, right. Is there any grant money available? I was just about to say, isn't there a historic preservation grant that comes out every summer? It comes out. It's we've missed that, but um, I have been involved with the historic preservation grant in the past, um, and it's an enormous amount of work, and it is not worth our time for ten thousand dollars. For fifty thousand, we did it for the barn survey a few years ago. To whatever ten years, but it seems like yesterday, but it was quite a while ago. We did it for the barn survey and we got 11000 I think, $11,000. And we spent so much time dotting the I's and crossing the T's and going back and forth to Boston that I, it's, not worth, it's not worth the work for $10,000. So having, having done a historic preservation grant for the <coughs> Hockenham Schoolhouse, I feel your pain. Um, that uh, it's an awful lot of work for not a whole lot of return, um, but it's something we can at least take a look at. Maybe, Next year. maybe the uh, requirements are not quite as difficult as they have been. <laughs> you still work with Michael, his last name, I can't remember now, and he's, he's got details. He's wonderful, but he's very detail oriented. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's, if, we, if we ask for the whole project, we ask for all of town and ask for thirty thousand dollars, and then we have a year to use it. And then we wouldn't be able to get it done in a year. I don't think. Right? I think you could take more than a year to use the money if we got it right. If it was CPA, capital, the CPA might not can. CPA, CPA or capital, you can, but not for the grants. Not yeah. the grant. Yeah. So. David, the uh, Mass DOT was looking at the historical marker on this side of the Coolidge Bridge today to mm -hmm. uh, repair it, replace that's, that's it. That's on here. So we've uh, already dealt yeah, with that. Maybe we can tag on to it. At least for 40 that's seven. actually That's actually a very good idea because I know that they've done directional signs in the past. So let's ask them. Yeah. Well, right. we, we've already talked to them. We asked them to put it on, on the, the common. Did they tell you that? That's Didn't on their agenda. That? That's their own agenda. What's your position on that? We we told them that they asked what we would like to do with the sign that is right at the Coolidge Bridge, and we suggested that it get moved to the common near the bike path so that people traveling on the bike path would have the opportunity to stop and read it. As where it is located now, the only opportunity you have to read it is if you're stuck in traffic. 
which happens. Fortunately, it happens. Very true. <laughs> and we also requested that they refurbish the sign that's by friendlies on the town line in the cameras, which is also in very terrible condition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'll work with you to try to get some dollars for. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank welcome. you. Next. I think we jumped over Hadley Media. So. Media. Hadley Media. Good evening. Number 72. Madam Chairman, uh, members of the select board, planning committee. Um, I'm just a member of the uh, uh, Hadley Media group, but I lost the coin toss this new time. So you're here. So I, I got the chance to, to address you. I don't have. Um, Unfortunately, we can't present a balanced budget to you guys tonight. Um, I'll tell you briefly what the problem is, and I'll offer, we will offer you a solution to the problem. Um, the, the problem is that our income is fixed, and as a function of the cable subscribers' monthly payments, you can see it on your bill how much goes to us. And with cable cutting, people cutting cable prescriptions uh, and uh, subscriptions and, um, and other things, uh, if the cable companies didn't keep raising their rate, we'd be in real trouble because they raise the rate, we still get a percentage of the increased rate even though there are fewer subscribers. But that can't go forever. So our budget is essentially fixed and has been for quite a while. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever, you guys met in January, the Finance Committee and the Select Board, and uh, had a presentation of uh, the, uh, uh, from the town administrator showing the allocation of expenses that would be charged to uh, enterprise funds to help offset the real costs of the town budget. The problem is that that went to $22,000 in that 2020 budget. Now the history is that the year before, this current year, it was $14,000. And the year before that, it was $7,000. And we just can't possibly absorb $22,000 out of $70,000 when you consider that $37,000 goes to the director and $17,000 goes to the camera person. Um, so, let me, um, what I did was I called uh, in a chip. Uh, you remember a couple of years ago, the select board asked the, the Department of Revenue to do a financial management study of the town. The guy who ran that uh, interviewed me and I, we became friends. And I called in a chip. I called him the other day, left a message, and I told him I wanted to talk to the person in the Department of Revenue in Boston who knew the most about enterprise funds. A day later, I got a call back from a great Lady, 34 years of service with the Department of Revenue. She was completely uh, conversant with the issues. Uh, many towns have had the same problems we're having. But many towns have also gone to a format which David Nixon um, brought to you. And the problem, though, is that uh, when I went through what the result of the, the formula that David was using and the application of it, she. <laughs> I wrote down some of her comments, which at one point she interrupted me and she said, wow. It's like, huh? And another one she said, I'm baffled. She, she didn't understand why we were doing it the way we were doing it. So um, my suggestion, and our committee is in total agreement, um, is that we sit down with the uh, town administrator, our liaison, uh, a member of the finance committee, and try to iron out an agreement, and this is what most towns do, um, that is written down and says, this is what is okay to charge, and this is what's, we're not going to charge the enterprise fund. And, and, and uh, I hope you would agree to just sit down and work it out. We work it, when, when the enterprise fund was charged $7,000, we worked that out with David and the Department of Revenue in Springfield. It was down from considerably more than that. And I think we can do the same thing again, again, if you guys can get behind it. I suspect that the other enterprise funds might uh, have some similar issues to the ones that we have. Um, does that make any sense to you? I, I just have one question for you, sure. John. Because these numbers are based on 
total expenses for fiscal year 2018. And did you guys have a big capital purchase in 2018 that's driving that well, it, number the up? The capital pur purchase should not be in the operating budget. You're saying that shouldn't be included in the expenses. Should not be included. Okay. Okay, the second thing, I'm glad you brought it up. The salaries that are mentioned, uh, the first, the top number, the big number that uh, you had in your presentation is basically, as near as we can tell, the general fund uh, salaries. And when I talked to the lady at the DOR, and I, she subsequently referred me to a person who was the finance director in another town, and she confirmed the same thing, that number should have not only the general fund salaries, but it should also have the salaries in all three of our enterprise funds for a much larger denominator than we're currently using. Because if you were to try to figure out how much of a pie we were cutting out, you'd have to start with the whole pie, wouldn't you? To find out what percent the piece we take out is, we have to, st to start with the whole pie. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think there's an error there. It's a small error. There are bigger errors that we can maybe discuss uh, during the daytime when the members of the finance committee can be there at maybe a lunchtime, brown bag lunch. David will be there, and there are some members of our committee. Um, so John, can I just... Um, please. Okay, so uh, the last meeting that I attended with um, have the media folks was we have a bigger problem. But I didn't want to bring that up to you. But <laughs> well, I, I do. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think it's important. So the bigger issue we have is one of going concern. Um, the way that Hadley Media is currently funded, the contract with Charter, what's happening with um, people moving away from cable, the, the funding mechanism that's in place isn't sustainable. So part of what we talked about is, and I think this goes, you know, goes to how we spend our time, um, it's looking like we're going to have to have a conversation about whether or not Hadley Media should be brought back into the town budget. Um, or, you know, there are other options. I mean, we could uh, privatize it, turn it into a nonprofit like some other municipalities have done, but we're a relatively small, small shop here. So, uh, so for me, it just begs the question, where do we spend our time? Do we... Well, I'll tell you where we're... No, wait. Okay, go ahead. So, do we spend our time um, digging in on the administrative chargeback this year, or do we have a, a study committee formed to talk about next year? Because again, we're not going to be able to keep doing this. We can cut thousands of dollars out of the chargeback, but it doesn't make the real problem go away. And I'd rather spend our collective time talking about the, the real problem and coming up with a solution um, that we can get our heads wrapped around and prepare people for, because I think it's, we're probably about two years away from needing to do something dramatically different. Could, could I come back at that? Sure. Uh, finance have anything to add to that? You know, I, I was um, interested, I was just listening, interested in what Mala was saying about the future. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we, we have a 10-year uh, contract with uh, Charter Communications. That charter, that contract is due to expire in October 2024. Um, it's probably at that time or sooner that we should be thinking about um, some sort of sustainable path for Hadley Media. Whether that's, as you said, bringing it back in under the tax rate where it used to be um, uh, or we privatize it, or merge with another town. What do uh, we? What do we yeah, do? That was going to be my statement. We're, we're talking about regionalization, with everything else is, is Amherst or Northampton capable well, of. It, it's interesting this should come up, and uh, on Friday at ten thirty, and anyone could come. We're meeting with uh, FCAT, the Franklin County Cable uh, uh, Committee. Okay. And they do four towns as an example. And we're just going to enter into a very preliminary discussion to try to figure out if that is one of the viable alternatives. Have you spoke uh, to anybody in Amherst, John? Not yet. Not yet. We, we just want to get the base. We want to know what functions they do for other towns. Amherst doesn't do 
I don't think they do it for other towns. Yes. This outfit does. And what is it they're willing, what could they do for us? And is it similar to what we're currently doing? Okay. So but I'd like to just push back a little bit. Um, unless we get down to the correct operation of the formula for the chargebacks to the town, we, we're not going to go anywhere. We, and I'm not saying that I'm totally right. I'm not saying that David is totally wrong. But I think we ought to have a meeting of the minds, which is what's done in most towns. So, so one of the things I think that always happens when we talk about the administrative charge bags is that it becomes a David thing. And I just want to remind everybody here that this was something that was developed in conjunction with the Finance Committee, reviewed by the Select Board, reviewed by the Department of Revenue, and adopted by the town. So this is not a David thing. I just want to let you know All right. that. But when I talk to the DOR, and I haven't had a chance to talk to the Finance Committee or the Select Board about the operation of that formula, you'll be surprised at how we can actually operate with it applied correctly. And then we can get to these other long-term issues and how long we can last. Yeah, I think just what I'm saying, John, is that if you if you have um, a household that's that's carrying debt and expenses and the, the income is there's such a shortfall and you spend your time talking about well maybe we can cut a little bit of discretionary income out when the reality is even if you cut the discretionary income out they're going to go into bankruptcy who's going to go into bankruptcy I, no what i'm not talking literally i'm saying just as an analogy I'm just suggesting that rather than spend all of this time talking about this administrative charge back and which line items right and all of that other stuff, I'd really rather spend the time talking about coming up with a long-range plan for the health and welfare of Hadley Media to make sure that we don't fall backwards in the public um, access to the governmental programming. And if it means that, okay, there's a charge of in somebody's mind of an extra few thousand dollars in a particular year, it, it just kind of doesn't really matter. What matters is us getting our heads wrapped around making sure that this is viable and sustainable because Hadley Media is hugely important to the public. Okay. So I'm just picking and choosing where I want to spend my time. Okay, but what you're doing, Molly, it seems to me, is you're eliminating the chance to sit down and talk out the application. No, or, I'm Are you willing to do that next week? I've, I've been to your meetings, right? No. You guys have no, seen no, me, no. right? Thank you. So I mean, I'm, I'm just saying I think the conversation should be a different conversation. Rather than drilling into the line items here, let's talk about framing out a process so that we can figure out how we're going to make sure that Hadley Media is sustainable. That's that's where I would like to spend the time talking. Okay, do you guys want to answer? Uh, I appreciate that. I think the long-term questions are more important but the um, short-term questions are also important because we have such a small budget because these are not public funds these are private funds uh, subscriber fees um, fund the entire budget for had the media and it's a tiny budget so hitting us hard on overhead charges are actually not real it actually have nothing to do with what we cost the town um, really limits what we can do for the town. I appreciate what you say about the importance of, uh, of community access TV, but you can't say two things. You can't say you don't want to talk about next year's budget and say it's really important to the town. So every year's budget is important. And this broad brush stroking of budgeting, saying this isn't your year, I'm sorry, you guys put in so much volunteer time, so I know how hard you guys work and how much time you put in, and it's un unbelievable. And all we should do is say thank you. But um, every department, every employee counts. And Broad Brush works as a management tool, but we have to take the time to look at each department and every line item and see if it's um, good or not. I, and I'm just going to say, I, I'm surprised at this new, um, I, I don't pay close attention, as you know. I thought the departments go in front of the Finance Committee. And I thought the Finance Committee is an independent body to review department budgets. And now I see the Finance Committee is almost invisible and we are asking for in the first round of discussion the select board to approve or to discuss our budget with us 
So has, in fact, the Finance Committee been disempowered from their role, no. their statutory role? Why didn't you ask the Chair of the I Finance Committee? I just did. Committee. They said they've been doing it for a year or two. That was their answer. So I'm concerned about two things, that there's no longer an independent body that the departments can talk to without the political influence. And I'm concerned that you have so much work to do as volunteers that a little $14,000 line item that we come to you with uh, shouldn't be taking a lot of your time. And I agree with you, Molly. It shouldn't be taking a lot but of we, your time. And I look forward to the long-term discussion about the future of um, Community Access TV. I hope I hope that we can make it work. I know, Joyce, I talk about much. No, no, much. I just, I just. So want let's talk about both. I'll shut up. No, no, I. 20 seconds. Let's I, talk about both. I, I, I think what is missing here is that we've done this for a number of years is that we've had the finance and we brought in the department heads because we wanted them to hear the first round of what the budgets are. So I think you're still planning on having your Saturdays, right? Are you not? No, this is no, going to be just this, it this for now. In the, in the past we had our, one year we had Saturdays. Um, Last year was just it was just us. I, I don't believe you met with all of them. You just took our rec more of our recommendation, unless there was a problem. Yeah. This year, I know we had a couple new two uh, select board members looking, you know, w wanting to hear it. As, uh, you know, mm -hmm. at the same time, we, we wanted to hear it. You know, so it was we went, we tried this to see if it was going to work, so people didn't have to present twice, mm -hmm. um, so that some select board members could hear it at the same time we're hearing it. I didn't mean to distract the conversation. I just hope there is time okay. to talk about both uh, an upcoming year long budget yeah. and, um, and talk about the long term problem, which is real. And I'm glad you appreciate that, Molly. So thank you. We Let's take an hour out of our busy <coughs> schedules to talk about both, please. Yeah. Okay. David, David, we did, and I, and I did vote for it to combine the Finance Committee with the board for each it's of the departments. You, John. I know. <laughs> thank, you. thank you for your comment. Let's not get distracted, right? No. Yeah. Um, but I, it was just more for information, so it's not taking up all your time, not taking up all the finance committee okay. people's time, all taking up the board of selectmen. Might make a lot of sense. I don't know. Okay. I'm just well, so, it, so, yeah. Thank you, I mean, so if we could, got issues, we've got to talk about them. There's okay. no doubt about thank it. Thank you. Okay. Absolutely. Could, could we have a finance committee member, perhaps our liaison, and David sit down during the day and work through this thing so we understand? I'm fine. Doing that. You're fine I'm, with I'm just let's let's get on to the task at hand, which is the bigger task. And and honestly, once we agree on the formula, I don't want to revisit it and revisit it that's, and revisit it and revisit it. That's, that's the very I'm reason why most towns have a written agreement. This is what I learned by making a bunch of phone calls. They, they you're right. I totally agree with you. It's a waste of hit Davis time, it's a waste mm -hmm. of our time, it's a waste of your time. But we've got to do it once so that we all agree. That's fine. Okay. Fair enough. Are you fine with that? Any other questions for the Hadley TV? No? HVAC? No? And that meeting will be no more than one hour. And we'll come to an agreement at the end of the hour. Okay. 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 All right. I'll let you guys set up that meeting. That'll be fine. All thank right. you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What's next? Are we done? I want to do liquor licenses next because we have these gentlemen sitting here very patiently waiting, waiting for us, waiting for us to. Uh, don't want to keep you uh, waiting any longer. You've been very patient. Thank you. And thank you for coming in. You did express your concerns about this uh, this article, and um, you know, uh, after having had some discussion too, I think we've had a little rethought on um, what we would feel would be a fair thing for um, supporting our people that have businesses in town and. Um, Certainly, if you would like to share with us your thoughts, I know that uh, Molly did share some uh, with us, but uh, certainly. I think uh, we didn't know anything about it. We thought it was all going to be the on-premise, mostly the restaurants we were looking for. Mm -hmm. um, I was made aware from someone that was up north that they were going for five off-premise, which affects myself and Sean, more or less. Uh, they were full with their license, I assume. Uh, so they were just beer and wine. And with that, if you're looking at where would you guys, you're asking for five, the eastern side of the town, there's four liquor stores within that. 
a quarter mile for liquor licenses. This side of town, there were two. There are two. Now there's one. One person happens. I think they went out of business this past weekend. Fonzie's closing. Oh, you got it. Friday? I'll be good at Friday. Only assume. Yeah. So that's our question. You're going to put five in. Who's going to go for those five? It's probably going to be these big boxes, which right behind Sean, right next to us. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that we, we live in the town, we pay our taxes. Mm -hmm. You're part of the article said that you're looking for revenue, but we leave our money in town. <coughs> we eat in town, uh, we mm -hmm. get money from that. And a lot of other things we do. Sean does a lot of volunteering. Mm -hmm. I think he has a wine tasting this weekend mm -hmm. um, for the senior center. He does a lot with the helping Helping us <laughs> out of school. Um, but does a lot that way. We coach kids. We've done Cal Ripken. We had a president who was so so. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we get back to the town in different ways. Uh, it's always hard when you have a woman ahead of baseball, isn't it? Yeah. She was good. <laughs> you to listen to her. Sorry. <laughs> you listen. You, you still do the bottle and can drives for kids too? We do. For I think the band's doing one and then the sixth graders. Some of them have stopped doing that because it's too dirty. <coughs> so that being said, seeing that <coughs> you're offering five of them, these big places are gonna come look for the license. Um, I heard one of the places was Whole Foods. I think that guy has a little bit of money <laughs> you know, Whole Foods. Yeah. That I don't think he needs that much more money uh, maybe for his ex-wife to be. I was going to say with a divorce, maybe not. <laughs> but that's going to take money out of Sean, who's right next to it. Um, we compete, but I'd rather see him in business than someone else that's taking that money out of town. And that's where we wanted to say stuff. I'm sure Sean has much more to say. I do. Um, you know. I work very closely. I'm on the board of what is it, the uh, Campus Community Coalition Against High Risk Drinking. Uh, I involved with Spiffy, um, strategic planning for family initiatives. Uh, I've gone to the national conference for the Re Responsible Retailers um, Federation. Uh, very involved with preventionists and how to limit access to alcohol of alcohol to kids and the biggest thing is price and outlets density of outlets you're going to double the uh, density you're potentially doubling the density and wherever these kids go to do their regular shopping you're going to see alcohol these big boxes not as well uh, they're well managed, they're just not well security for alcohol. You go into Whole Foods and other grocery stores, it's in every single corner of the store. You walk into the entry of Whole Foods where there are no employees and there's a hundred case wine or beer display. Some of it just walk right in, walk right out with it. So those are the things that you're potentially gonna have to deal with um, going to increase uh, public safety uh, responses to uh, well just because we get them doesn't mean we're going to give them all out either you know but why have them you will give them all out no I don't you think may that. not the next board will the board after that will if it's just for money um, there are many studies that it doesn't truly help the economic development it's all the other additive stuff you know you put in a new shopping center or you revamp an old shopping center having a liquor license there doesn't draw other things there it just doesn't I can, I can forward you reports I can forward you uh, the CDC reports about density um, and uh, access of alcohol and just the the mere appearance of having it everywhere it, it it is a regulated item i think that's what people forget 
we've gotten so far from um, prohibition times that uh, people forget um, everybody has some, a little bit here, a little bit there. It's a regulated item. It should be treated uh, with respect and strict regulations. Well, I think when you talk about economic development, um, you know, just thinking about Hadley, I mean, when you think about the tax base, mm -hmm. you know, from an economic development standpoint, what we really want, obviously, is our property taxes and then our other, um, other receipts to increase, you know, over time. And the biggest bang for the buck that we get right now has been, um, as you know, the advent of the hotel and meals tax. Mm -hmm. um, and I will admit that when we were talking, I, I talked to David about it afterwards, I was losing the fact that these were off-premise. I actually thought that they were um, on-premise. So I was thinking about it in terms of if a restaurant wants to come into town or a, a hotel wants to set up a you know, bar or whatever within mm -hmm. the hotel, I don't really have a problem with that because those places are going to attract people from outside of town to spend money and, and we get a pretty good bang for the buck on that. Um, to your point, you know, having a, uh, you know, nothing against a town and country, but that, that type of establishment come in or you know, wasn't necessarily what, what I was thinking about. So um, I would still like to support offering or having the ability to hand out licenses, but my preference would be to make them on premise. Um, and then it's a question of whether or not we want to keep like maybe even just one beer and wine license or something like that and, and the coffers. Um, You're gonna so have Fonzie's back in the coffers. That's true too. That's right, actually. So that's an all right. alcohol. No, 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 just, no. Beer. Oh, just, no, beer, just beer and wine. wine. I personally feel like, I mean, I'm a own a small business, I feel for you guys, and I like that we have different stores in town that are owned by people that live in town, that sponsor, you know, senior center events, sponsor ball teams, all that kind of stuff, and are an active part of the community. And I do feel like opening this up to more of a capitalistic approach, I mean, we could all be overrun by just like two box stores, and those are the only stores we have in town, and that's not necessarily the town that I want to live in. I like having all businesses be more individual, so I personally kind of feel like we should take this off and get rid of these off-premise licenses unless we really, you know, need them for some reason or have some great booming growth opportunity, but for our population right now, I don't see the need to, to do this. Right. Well, do we have any on-premise left? We have special legislation on-premise left. Yeah. Um, for all alcohol, and then we have um, wine and malt on premise, regular and um, regular, I mean, within our allotment, and then we have special legislation of those as well. It's the off premise that we're out of. Okay. But okay. so it would just be out of So we can take off premise office out of it. I, I personally don't particularly care to, well, I hate to say it, but I, I've never shopped at Whole Foods. So, I mean, it's not one of my places that I go. I just don't feel the need to. Um, and I would go there to buy. I, I, well, they already have beer and wine. Yeah. Yeah. It's just beer and wine, but I still wouldn't yeah. go there. To, I don't drink beer and wine, so there you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, Mike. I just wanted to say that these two gentlemen are always supporting the fire department. There's never a question when we walk through the door. However, when you walk into these bigger stores, it's an act of Congress to try and get the donation. So I just want to thank them because there's never a no whenever we go to ask for help for anything. Well, we certainly appreciate it. So can I entertain a motion to remove the off-premise liquor licenses? I so moved. Make a motion. Uh, second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 No. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being part of our community. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for saying something. Too. Just for the yeah. record, I was the best president. Vice president. Do we need to pull the warrant to remove that? We could pull it off. We were going to talk about the warrant anyway. We get to it. <laughs> let's uh, let's move along.
All right. Um, DOT markers. So we talked about that just very briefly. Um, the the one that's going on town common. If you so agree. Well, you know, I don't want the town common to become a barrage of markers. You know. Uh, I don't think there are any. Yeah, there is. There's one on the there's common. Rock. There's I'm one sure by, there. Rock, yeah. There's one okay. by the. They're all historical rocks from Civil War times. We have rocks. Um, you know, so I mean, this would be DOT. If they're paying for restoration and everything, I'm behind it 100 percent. I mean, they're going to make those signs look good again. Could, could we put it on like either the east or west drive side of West Street instead of in Common? So. We want it on the bike path, like there's a sidewalk on each side, there's a bike path on each side. We're so plunking it in the middle of the common. Yeah, I wouldn't want it in the middle. I don't want it in the no, middle. Of the common. Common. I, mean, I was either. thinking along where the, the bike path the bike crosses path goes, the yeah. common somewhere in there. In that area. Yeah. But yeah. Not, not like in the middle. Not, I'm saying not in the middle. I'm saying as opposed to, you know, there's streets on either side on one of those streets instead of like on the bike path that's in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so cars going down West Street can see. So, yeah, or you could see it on the bike path there. It wouldn't be right on the common. I don't know. So what, how about if we have the DPW work with uh, Chris Ogifer? Yeah, and the Historical and the Historical Commission, commission on, the, on those signs. Yeah, Historical said they already talked to District 2 about them. I, I'd like to see a historic handle it. Okay. They're preserving those signs that have been there for... You want to make a motion? To Whatever. So well, I guess they have it on your new location. Is this is the sign that so was by the bridge? Yeah. 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 It's at the town line, and the other one's at uh, the Amherst and Hadley town line, over by the car wash over there. Okay. Right. Motion. Um, make a motion. Are they going to leave the one <laughs> on the Amherst line over there? <laughs> <laughs> no, they we're, gonna... we're th now they talked about that already. They want to put one down on the Amherst line. There's one there, right? There I was know, one. But they yeah. want to restore it. Okay. So the one, the only one we're moving is the one at the Coolidge Bridge to the common. Correct. And the Amherst one's going to stay Correct. Where, where it belongs. Yes. Well, then the other thing issue is but it'll be right on. Well, let's have a motion on this first. You can make a motion to relocate, restore, and relocate the Hadley historical marker from Route Nine to the West Street Common. Okay, and have them work with our DPW. And director. have them work with our DPW and director historical too. Commission. And historical commission to find an appropriate location. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Then the other one was. Um, the Route 9 traffic request from DOT on the uh, warning peach people of a flashing light there. The Hawk light. Hawk they want to put a flashing light up when it activates up at a common, is that correct? So now we're going to have one of those on the common. Oh, wait, because it's on a curve or shouldn't it? Yeah. Right. right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Want to go back to taking that house up? Yeah. So we're. It depends where they want to put their, their thing. I don't want it sitting in the middle of the town in there. No. Probably be in the corner near Alinas. Alinas? Is Just that, so would that it be on that side or the, on the Esalon side? No, the Esalon side, I think. So as they approach mm -hmm. the center of town coming. They got a picture east. of it here. Do you see it? West. Did it, was click there a on the second one. On the dock. Oh, on it's going to be, uh, I've seen these on hills uh, before. Okay. and it. It flashes red mm -hmm. signal ahead when mm -hmm. when it's activated. Oh yeah. Right. Can can we possibly approve this with the um, okay. stipulation that it will not be placed on the town common? Mm -hmm. Because uh, you know, with all the stuff that we're going to have there, it's going to look like a junkyard. Yeah. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, too, I mean, if you watch, I mean, I'm sure we've all seen oh, people right blow corner. right through it sure. when that thing is flashing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, People are picking up pretty good speed right there, so I mean, maybe even backing it up earlier to get them to slow down at that. You said it's like the Indy 500 coming around that corner. Oh, yeah. Wow, it's awful. Yeah. Yeah. I think they said the highest speed they had by the uh, big white car wash was like 80 miles an hour coming down the night. Oh, nice. Anybody stop that car? Yeah, they got them. <laughs> So basically, so this letter is saying that they disagree with the police department's assessment of the speed limit and that they're not going to help us at this point with local speed. With the speeds. Yeah. yeah, I did see that. But they're going to put bigger speed limit signs. Absolutely. They're working on them right now, I see. 
So what do we want to do with that sign? Where do you want to have them put it? Do you, do you think that would be helpful? Like from the public safety perspective, is that going to help? That's a good question. I, I mean, mean, I would defer to Chief Mason on that. Yeah. He's yeah. really got a much better but yeah. anything. If you don't want that. it on a common, it would probably have to go on that little common by Nibala's White House there probably. You know, right? Well, that's what I'm it, saying. The, it seems the too house close. is the blind yeah. corner, so it's, it's got to be before the house, mm -hmm. I mean. You probably have to put it up by Ashland. I mean, I just so that people would be aware that they're approaching, yeah. right? People would even, you know, if you're flying down that road, are you really yeah, looking for this type of sign? No, it, it, yeah. it flashes. It's pretty. It, it, it's pretty attractive. You know, it, it catches your eye. Okay. I've, I've seen I a think few they of need operate. something anyway, and that be how many accidents have occurred right there on the corner with people taking the turn to go down West Street? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. a lot. It's, a lot. I mean, it's decreased since when it was it wasn't as straight as it is now, but it's yeah. still we still got them. Yeah. Okay. Want to have? Uh, what do we want to do with it? I don't want it on the common. No. So maybe they can come out and take a look at it with. Uh, oh, let's give that to Chris. Yeah. Too. Can they, can they, oh, and Mike Mason. And Mike Mason. Can they show us where they yeah. want to put it on a yeah. map, maybe, and then mm -hmm. come back? Come up with an approval. approval. Yeah. Alternate, Alternate location, location. That's not on the common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'll make a motion that we request that they provide us a location on a map that is not on the common and for have, the have conversation with our chief of police and, and, and consult with our chief of police and our dpw director second i mean you probably could you probably could almost go on that little curb on echelons parking lot if you had to go to the other side of the common yeah. okay all right sounds good no um, um, no all in favor Aye. 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 I'm just moving along. We're all saying yes, but I guess you've got to have the vote. Um, all right, where are we? Annual town meeting? Uh, senior center library. Senior center library. Oh, we didn't get to town meeting? Oh, yeah, you're right. We didn't do the town meeting one yet, did we? No. Maybe we'll do it next week. Well, there's a couple of things that we should uh, at least touch on, and I think there's an opportunity <laughs> to put the football a little bit. Well, let's do let's do the let's get the senior center and library and fire substation out, and then we can go to the town warrant. Senior center, anything? Senior center. The fence is going to go up on the fifth, which is is that Friday, yeah. and uh, they're all moved in over there. I stopped by there yesterday. I was really shocked at how moved in they are. I mean, yeah. it's like. They've been there for years, and it looks great. And um, yeah. you know, thanks to Gary Berg for doing all that work to move them over yeah. there. He really, they're very thankful for all his help. So mm -hmm. I just have to Excellent. reiterate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Library. Uh, library. So um, had a couple of delays, to, but just I mean, for good reason, just making sure things are right. Um, so I think it looks now by the time the bids go out and come back, probably be the end of. May, so I don't think the actual deconstruction, whatever you want to call it, bulldozing, <laughs> demolition, I guess those were the really <laughs> demolition of the uh, Cooper School will uh, likely not occur until June. Okay. So, is there a question on the senior center? Yeah, go for it. Um, I saw in the meeting minutes that we told them we need 30 days notice for a groundbreaking ceremony or something along those lines. We're trying to get that, yeah. Is is there any way that we can, I don't know, push push this or move this along? Because my only fear is that, you know, initially we had been talking about an April groundbreaking, and I don't think we're obviously we're not going to get that now. But I mean, although we're moving in that direction, yeah. Um, I just don't want to see delays and kind of the startup and getting things rolling process and then pushing the construction project back and then in turn moving the library back. As well. It's I don't think that's going to be the problem right now based on what I've heard. I think some of the issues, and I was at one construction update meeting today, but a big thing that's delaying it right now is the permit process. I don't know if you were there today, or was, were either of you guys stayed for that permitting meeting and saw how it went after the sink for the senior center, both the contractor and OPM were here. Yeah, we just did the uh, initial meeting there and hear everything about contracts. Per permits from okay. Yeah, it's like permit. building permit, you know, all the, MPE permits kind of and there was like some delay on Conservation Commission trying to get in erosion control in the wetland area So there are a few things that are 
not delaying the project, but just like God, have that should have been all in place for heaven's sakes. It's stuff that has to get. No, the, I'm not the quite contractor sure. has to do it. So contractor has so to it, be. In. All the fees fees are waiting and everything. It's a lot of paperwork. Is all it's going to be. Yeah, I, I don't really think it's going to delay anything. But is there a yeah, period? I mean, time? Yes. we're we're looking at <clears throat> excavating starting the end of April right now. Like April twenty second um, is when we're going to start. That's what's on the schedule, but I don't know when we're going to have an official groundbreaking ceremony. That was the tricky part. So there may be some work done before groundbreaking is. Yeah, and then there was something too with like to get the tra construction trailer in, we need temporary power. Oops. Temporary power is coming from where actual power is coming from. That relies on town meeting vote to right. grant the easement, to put in the poll, the power. So it's like right. all of these things kind of escalating. So, right. but I mean, there. It, it, they're trying to work as fast as they can. It's not. Uh, we did review time frames today. Yeah. So we, like they're, we're pushing through. Like uh, Tim has a bunch of stuff we have to review. We have our narrative we're waiting for, for the initial building documents. And yeah, stuff. yeah. But yeah, the trailers on hold, so they're just going to use a room in the senior, the senior center. Because right because the demolition of the senior center is a little delayed, right now, more than we thought. So. Mm -hmm. Just see this slipping well, as far as time already. I think the abatement's going to be a big thing too. Mm -hmm. Once they get it abated, then it'll go quicker. Chris, just as an update, I got conservation and Phil to uh, okay. pull up to talk to each other this afternoon. So Great. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They were going to talk after the meeting. I just left. Yeah, so they made yeah. that connection. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, to your point, I think we need to do everything we can collectively to remove obstacles as they come up just to keep people so we'll it's a matter of picking up the phone and calling Paulette or whomever or Janice you know mm -hmm. okay. and our uh, fire substation went before the planning board last night um, presentation was there we uh, had a new turnaround in the picture as you all saw mm -hmm. uh, we answered all of their questions I thought very appropriately uh, we had put in, we spent the $5,000 to design that um, catch basin underground um, that's an ad alternate. Uh, three out of the four planning board members uh, in the end said that they would vote for the project as it was once they knew where the separator that that was in and um, the swell was only going to be nine inches so and all of that drainage of things was talked about um, so they were all in favor of that and then of course the fourth odd man out uh, decided that he was not going to vote for this project no way and so on and so forth so he proved to be himself as usual um, what, what was his objection for the people working at home or watching at home he didn't like that we didn't put in the uh, underground thing as the base bid and not uh, this is an uh, ad alternate and his other the grease, grease trap. trap the grease trap and we are working on that now uh, didn't realize that it's not a commercial kitchen um, it's not going to be used as a commercial kitchen even as a warming center if we had to we wouldn't even be cooking meals there for people those meals would be brought in by Red Cross or somebody else if we had to use that building um, as a, a center so uh, still would not vote anyway which way for it um, so basically he said that uh, if, even if it did go through that he uh, again threatened as his usual self that uh, he would uh, file a lawsuit so a 10 uh, person, ten person petition. petition so again we're being thrown at with lawsuit 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 and that seems to be his uh, go-to so unfortunately, uh, did not go. We are going to work on getting an answer from um, public health on the grease trap, and um, I believe we're going to leave uh, it as is, as an ad alternate for the uh, catch basin. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we are. We're going back in two weeks again after elections. So do we have to sign something? Do we have to sign There's something? There's a contract yeah. for the contract. services here. Yes. Thank you. 
Do you want to sign now? Or <coughs> can you wait? Pass it along. Is it definitely lit? Did you have anything else you wanted to add to that? Okay, so no. All the terms. Your pink or blue, yeah, SB and Molly's. Molly's will be. So it's a good time to remind people that we do have, while well, people get passed out, that we have elections coming up next week. Um, we have a write in candidate for the planning board. Uh, his name is Mark Dunn. Please write the name Mark Dunn with a dot and fill in your dot um, if that's who you're going to vote for. And um, we have our two select board members that are running again, and please re-elect them to this committee. We work well as a group. Um, can we, can we be saying this? <laughs> um, I can, I guess I, I can. I think I have to throw a flag on the plane. Go ahead, throw a flag. Yeah, you can encourage people to vote. I can vote. I'm just saying that, you know. Not for who? I'm not for who. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, we do have incumbents, I would say, I that have done a fine myself. I don't job. Need your help, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> well, gee, you should be saying thanks, not that. No. Okay. And you want to hit the town warrant? Was there a vote on that uh, designer contract uh, amendment? Make Can it make a motion to approve the designer contract for Second. the stormwater? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We sign along. All right, let's get to the town warrant. What's the changes? Okay, so there's a couple of changes. There's a number of articles that mm have -hmm. uh, come off because of planning board uh, action. Uh, then we had a late submission by conservation. Uh, they apologized. They uh, got tied up in the, uh, the move and found out that they didn't actually submit uh, articles in support of the two land preservation articles, CPA. So the articles that have come off are number 15, the special legislation for liquor licenses. Do we need to open the word? Yes, you will. Not yet, though. Yeah, allow me to. Okay, sorry. Okay, so um, Article 13, Hadley Kids Incorporated, is off. We're not ready for prime time. Article 29, Megan's Way is not ready. What what number is that? 29. 29. Okay. And then the Senior Overlay District Zoning Amendment is off. Number. Number 31. That is it. May I entertain a motion to open the warrant? That would be to add two articles, one for... Oh, I need to come in a minute. Wait a minute. Motion so to moves. open. Second. <coughs> okay, no, go ahead. The Conservation Commission has the land. Um, there are two CPA land of preservation articles, one for the Zala property for $210,000, the other one is for Needvala for $83,000 and $83,091. Those are both supported by uh, uh, conservation money, Zala for $150,000, and that's coming out of uh, transfer development rights, so there's no impact upon the tax rate for that. And then the other one is um, uh, the deep for 20773 That's coming out of the Conservation Land Fund account. Again, this is not something that's on the, the, uh, the tax rate. So he's not, the Nibala property is not 83000 it's 83,000 plus 20,000. So where's the 83,000 coming from? 83,000 is coming from CPA. And then the 20,000 is coming from where? 20,000 is coming from the, uh, well, let me pull up the article so I can read it. That's a portion that's not. But states now. It's coming from the. Uh, it's like 20% or something? Hadley Conservation. Um, I need to write, I have to rewrite that article. 20. Here was 
between one and one of those. So the senior overlay is also full. Senior overlay is off by the request of the uh, person petitioning. Right. 20,773 for the need bottle of farm is coming from the transfer of development rights, TDR. Okay. And then the uh, Zala property, 150,000 comes from two sources. 56,590 from TDR and the remaining 93,410 from Conservation Land Fund. Do you know where that, which of their land that is? Sorry? Um, do you know where that land is located that they're putting in? Uh, yes. So the Neat Bottle Could Farm is... <laughs> Where's that? The actual so Bay Farm, East Street? Yes. Yeah, yeah. so Around, around the center of town, mm -hmm. and the Shala property is up in the north end of town. Up off Shack Road. Yeah. Where's the balls? East Street? Yeah. Up at the farm? The whole farm. The whole farm. All the way yeah. down to the river, right? Yeah. Well, how many acres? Nice. Yeah. Well, the river. Yeah, I don't have that information here. It's on there. So is that going under APR or 61? Yeah, APR. APR. Both of them are APR. Yes. So those are two the two articles that need to be uh, approved to be added to the uh, board. John's signature so big he takes up the whole line. <laughs> okay, so those are the articles that you want added? Yes, please. So Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to close the warrant. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, so the Article 10 is the capital article. Oh, wait, we have one more? Did I not? No, there's no, no. not a new one. Oh, okay. No. Good. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, what are we doing? Trying to move the you opened it, here. closed it quickly. Okay. All right. So, uh, Capital Planning Committee met on Monday and finished their work, and they make the following recommendations. And Chris, don't let me put words I, in. Yeah. Your mouth. If you want to say, you can, I can go through it either way. All right. So, the three municipal building committee articles, uh, the Capital Planning Committee is recommending that we defer them to the fall in order to clarify the request as well as to uh, improve our chances of having cash funding for these articles rather than borrowing. So do we, do you want to go through them all? Or? Any, any objection to deferring those three? Which three? That would, would be, be the, the building school. improvements, the building maintenance, and the on-call consultant. And the reasoning there is on-call consultant. We said you could find that money elsewhere as a select board. The building improvements and building maintenance, there was some stuff in there that <coughs> could be CPA funded or was stuff that there is money currently allocated for, as well as putting new trailers in at the BPW. BPW director would rather put in a building than trailers. We couldn't come to a consensus before this, so we're just kind of deferring it to a, the fall. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to see the hot box and that stuff deferred because otherwise we'll have another rough one. Yeah, we can so we can come to the. Uh, yeah, so should be. I mean, I can just say that the four articles: cleaning and repair ditches, skid steer, hot box unit, mini excavator. Those four things we recommended. We don't have money to um, pay for those out of the budget. So we recommended putting those, keeping them on the warrant, putting them up for debt exclusion. If the town wants to vote for them and put a debt exclusion for them, we could we could get them. But that's really the only way we're gonna be able to afford it. Mm -hmm. um, cleaning well number two and septic truck, those we voted in favor of because they, you know, are, <coughs> have been on the, the yeah. cleaning well number two has been on there in the septage truck we need more money to be yeah, able to I told Marlowe he didn't have enough money in it originally yeah mm -hmm. and sure enough he didn't so these are for the fall yeah, yeah. those we two are for this this meeting this we'll one pay yeah. for them by cash the pay for them. building ones are moving to the fall 
Okay. Municipal building fall, water and sewer ones would be at this meeting. DPW computers, what did we say on that one? Did yeah, we say we yes? Split that funding split three that. ways, so that's mostly cash. Mm -hmm. What's and the what's the bottom? Yeah, the voting oh, booths. That's just Jess. Oh, Jess, Jess, Jess yeah. you missed that meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, they're yeah. falling apart, yeah, and the life yeah. expectancy of them mm -hmm. are only a number of years now, not twenty like the old ones were. So. Mm -hmm. And then the three quality. Must have been at Disney World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the Mickey Mouse ears on that. Uh, and then on the select board one, the capital asset schedule, the town clerk voting booth, select board furniture. We recommended all those under a borrow article, I believe. Borrow within the levy. Borrow within the levy. So no impact on taxes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Good. That's it. I don't know if we. Then the skid steer, hot box, mini excavator, and ditches would be debt excluded. Yep. So. Okay. Any objections? No. Move no. motion to. Um, we don't need a motion. Do we debt exclusion? No. The uh, original septic tr truck? No, that was paid for on sewer impact fees. Okay. Anything else? All right, so do you want to take a vote for endorsing or not uh, the capital article as amended? I can make a motion to <coughs> bless you. approve the uh, capital committee's recommendations. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, the next article, the um, revolving fund for the treasurer. She's doing a lot more work in terms of uh, tax liens. And uh, she wants to up the um, annual expenses allowed from 5000 to 7500 and the maximum amount that can be retained in that revolving fund as of June 30th from 10000 to 12000 So she's expecting more activity. Uh, there's no impact upon taxes for this change. Motion to recommend? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, number 12 is housekeeping article and acceptance of this unclaimed property statute. This um, relates mainly to uncashed checks, uh, and it, it allows us to dispose of unclaimed property mostly in the form of uncashed checks. Finance committee recommended 400. Four, yeah, 400. Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number 13 is deferred. Number 14 is the private duty detailed revolving fund, $19,000 to be added to the amount that's already there. There's 21,000 in there that with big projects ramping up. We anticipate uh, more work here. Um, funding for this is a challenge, gonna be a challenge, but the concept I think we all, all agree upon. Okay, okay recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 What are we doing with this one? That's the. Well, for right now, let's please. keep it on there and see yeah, if I can work some yeah. magic in the next uh, seven days. Yeah. No, I want to leave that on because it was, we. Can't get behind. Uh, no, I, I see big problems coming down the road with the unions and, and mm -hmm. with the police officers. And, you know, the, so the the local, the local police. That couldn't fill the ships. The state police didn't want to fill the ships because they already knew that they weren't going to get paid for them. It was just it was tough all around when we did this last section. I was surprised to see the state police out there today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. they've been on there too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. last week or something. Yeah. All right. You typically don't take a uh, stance on CPA articles. Okay. Which brings us to Article 25, the sidewalks. Finance mm -hmm. Committee debated this one and uh, couldn't come to any recommendation. Mm -hmm. a tough one. This is 25? 25. 25. Sidewalk. Wait, wait. Oh, 
Did you renumber them? I, I have Article 97 as 25, so. No. Yeah, 20. 24. So how's everybody take on this now that we've gone through part of a winter with uh, not doing the sidewalks on Route 9? Well, I know that Chris is still fighting with District 2. About Who's in charge? Of well, I, was respond I, was I, I did specifically ask in a meeting with uh, the engineers from District 2 the last time we met. Um, they are going to put a six foot buffer green space in, and then they are going to put a six foot sidewalk in. So it's going to be much easier to maintain from the Legion to the malls. So you're going to 12 feet? Yes. 12 feet. yes. Yeah, but who's gonna who's gonna shovel? Well, this is the engine. It's a much better design to maintain drugs. I know, but the who, biggest problem. Who, who did they say? At that point, then I'm willing to say the town could take it back on. Oh my God! I don't care whether you like it or not. Well, the problem is the way they designed I, it and built it. It's, it's man, not the maintenance. It's manpower. Do we have the manpower? To We've been maintaining them for 50 we, years. We haven't had sidewalks going the full length of Route uh, 9. No, I understand that one. No, that's going to be added on. We're, we're maintaining them all the way up to Spruce Hill Road now. We have been. We have been. We can discuss this later on. I have no problem talking to you about this, but I know you don't want to talk about it. I, 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 I'm just saying, my I don't think we should be responsible. Every other town around us is the people that have the sidewalks in front of their house are responsible for them. I'm not for it. Well, because you grew up in Hadley here. I grew up in Northampton. Oh, and, every, and everybody okay. over there had the to be responsible, and we shoveled our own <laughs> sidewalks. We weren't, we didn't depend on the city to shovel our sidewalks. So two things. Um, one is uh, I'd like again to your point now that we've been through a winter I'd like to get Christopher back in here to, to talk about this with us just to get some facts on the table about how things went before we actually take a boat didn't go well and then second <laughs> and then second I just wanted to echo John's sentiments from Monday night and he did point out how well we all get along so <laughs> we, make our, we make our points and we move <laughs> on <laughs> so. yes. Okay, we can both voice our opinions. That's it. Just what I've been hearing. Constructively, from, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Just what I've been hearing from residents, though, there seems to be a. Obviously, I don't want anything to do with Route 9. I think that should be the state. That shouldn't. We shouldn't have to be touching that at all because that's the, the largest expense we have. Mm -hmm. um, the historical districts, Middle Street, West Street, whatever. Um, we have the equipment to do that. Those areas. Uh, unlike Route 9 with going around lampposts and all that other junk. So I, th I think that the historical districts are, maybe this could be tweaked that would exempt certain portions of town so that way new sidewalks installed would be the responsibilities of the homeowners or you know something like those. State. Or the or yeah. the state or whoever. The route, route 9 is the problem. Yeah, yeah. but I, I think that um, you know, Route 9 is, is a whole other issue, but I, I think that at least the response I've gotten from residents is that they are uh, not for pushing it on the homeowners in those historical districts, unfortunately. So I don't know if there's a way to kind of find a happy medium between the two. But I'm Yeah, let's, let's find out. To Joyce's point, there is a manpower <coughs> sure. and at some point we have to right. figure out where we want to put the money. But, um, you know, Christopher comes back and says it's not that big a deal, you know, to do Middle Street and West Street, whatever, right. then at least we would have a better sense, mm -hmm. you know. Unless we can make a bylaw that specifically says that Route 9 will not be touched by the town. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Never, not ever. Yeah. 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 We can petition it on the town meeting floor and it can happen. Yeah. Yeah, it can happen. I'm for plowing all the sidewalks. All right. <laughs> all right, so we're going to have Chris come in and because you don't want to do your sidewalk. You don't have one in front of your house. It's on the other side of the street. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so, so Chris will come in and talk to us about right, that we one. We've got that on the next agenda. The 26, Article 26 is to see utility easement for the uh, Senior Center project. We already, can we vote on that? Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> 
and 27 would be to uh, petition the general court to release land from 97 protection. That's the ball field. A motion to recommend. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'm in the middle. I'm going to abstain. I'm going to be the first one out. On the ball field? Mm hmm. I want to hear what people have to say. Huh? I just want to hear what people have to say at the meeting. At what meeting? Town meeting. Okay. I don't know what meeting you're going to. No, no, no. No other meetings. Uh, just that one. All right. Well, almost there. 28 to designate the Saturka Park as compensatory recreational land under Article 97. Motion to recommend. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll stay out of that one too. I'll stay. You have something about greenery? <laughs> you can't tell greenery. Green 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 no, it doesn't like green stuff. Well, it's hinged on the other one. Almost, so, you know, almost done. One, one more. Planning, planning board, so you don't normally uh, take a stand okay, on. So you. that brings us back to. Um, Number seven, prior year invoices. We've got uh, two thousand dollars and two bills. How one did we to skip that one? Where do we go? BTL and the other one to the ZBA. Oh, it's up top. top Requires a nine tenths majority vote at town meeting. Finance committee recommends. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we got the budget, which we're still working on. And I think that wraps it up for you all. Perfect. Anything else? Except, for the, except for the sidewalk stuff. Sidewalks, yeah. That will be a debatable night. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time. I appreciate it. Certainly. Oh, well, you're so welcome, David. <laughs> Did we get everything? Is that it? No, not quite. Do we have any, um, before we go into executive session, do we have any announcements? I know this weekend is the uh, Helping Hearts for Hadley 5K. I had it on here. Oh, yeah, right there. Um, the, you know, is it? here it is. It's confusing because the Bid pickup is this Thursday and Friday from 3.30 to 6.30 at Hadley Elementary School. And then the race day is Sunday, April 7th at 10.30. You can register before the race at 9.30. Uh, Mother's Club cleanup day on April 27th mm -hmm. at Hadley yeah. Elementary School. Senior Center wine tasting this, this, Friday this Friday from six to eight. Yeah. Is it yeah. over here at the Most Holy Redeemer? No. Yeah. First no. Congregation. Oh, it's all sure. first, first time. Boy, where are you sending us? There we go. See, thank you. <laughs> How are you on the wrong spot? And just a reminder: we had the candidates' night on Monday, so if people missed it, they can view that on Happy Media. And polls are open on Tuesday. The from, from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Come out and do your duty and vote. Mm -hmm. Monday passing? Or? Monday what? Not yeah. yet. Oh. No, nope, not published. Oh. Yeah. I do have one from today. It was Barbara Bednar's, mm -hmm. and that is uh, Henry Phil and Donald Phil's uh, sister. Uh, who was a graduate of Hopkins Academy. She lived in Northampton, New Hampshire. Um, she did have a sister too, and I can't remember off the top of my head. She lives in Turner's Falls. So condolences to the Phil family. And that's all I have for right now. Okay, so anything else before we go into executive session? No. I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. Not to reconvene an open session. So select board will enter into executive session per provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A2 to conduct contract negotiations with non-union personnel, specifically the fire chief. All right. Click on administrative content. Yeah. There's a, a thing that you have to reach right there. I don't have it. All right. Yes, thank you for putting it on there. I did. 
click on that. What, this? Everybody's yeah, clicking at each other every time we do this. <laughs> I'm going to try to carry it forever. Yeah. First board. I'm going to put it on there and leave it on okay. there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded into executive, inter inter executive session, and that I state that not dis that discussing the matter in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley. Roll call vote. Yes. Phil. Yes. Kagan. Yes. Stanley. Yes. Trumbo. Yes. You're in executive session.